Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have a very cool theorem for you guys today. Um, this one is basically the theorem of the Gauss line, or sometimes it's called the Gauss-Newton line. Um, so if you haven't seen this before, um, I'm warning you it's pretty difficult, but it's worth giving it a shot. So if you'd like to try to prove it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so we have a quadrilateral A, B, C, D. Uh, a, B, and C, D meet at E, and B, C, and A, D meet at F. And um, then what we do is we take a couple midpoints. So the midpoint of A, C is G, the midpoint of B, D is H, and the midpoint of E, F is I. And we wanna show that those three midpoints are collinear. So this is a pretty well-known theorem. Um, there's a book I have called Advanced Euclidean Geometry by Roger Johnson, and he actually gives three different proofs of this theorem throughout the book. Um, but I feel like all of them involve a little bit of cleverness in some way. Um, that I, I kind of feel like they came out of nowhere a little bit. Um, so I'm going to give you a fourth proof of it that I found, and I feel like this one is maybe a little more intuitive. All right. Um, so first I'm going to start out um, by showing a couple things with areas. Um, so since G is the midpoint of side AC, the area of GBC has to be the same as the area of GBA. Okay, so GC equals CA, so the area of GBC is equal to the area of GBA, and that's clear because they have equal bases and equal heights from point B. Right, and then we could do the same thing with point D. So then we also know that the area of GDC is the area of GDA by the same argument. And this is where it gets interesting. So uh, that means that if we add uh, the area of GBC to the area of GDA, and by the way, this bracket notation means area. Sorry, I didn't mention it. But um, since each of them are half of the respective uh, triangles, uh, BCA and CDA, then if you add the areas of these two triangles, GBC and GDA, it has to be half the area of the quadrilateral ABCD. So I'm just going to call this expression S for now, because we're going to see it pop up over and over again. And then you could do this exact same argument you could do, but with the point H. So if you repeated the same argument all over again, you'd get the area of HBC plus the area of HDA is also S, which is half of the area of ABCD. And not only that, we can also get um, a very similar equality with point I. So I'm gonna show you here how we do that. Um, so the area of IDA, um, so it's going to be a minus this time. And the only real reason why it's a minus instead of a plus is because I is on the opposite side of BC as G and H. So the area of IDA minus the area of IBC. Um, so if you look at triangle IDA, uh, I claim it has to have half the area of triangle EAD. And that's because they both share the same base of AD, but the height from I is half of the height from E, and that's because I is the midpoint of EF, okay? So, yeah, so if we drop perpendiculars from both E and I, the one from I would have to be half of the one from E. And then also the area of IBC, um, well, that has to be half the area of EBC because um, they both share base BC, and if you dropped heights from I and E, to BC, to the line BC, the one from I would have to be half of it, because I is the midpoint of EF. Okay, so we have this equality. And then the area of EAD minus the area of EBC is uh, the area of ABCD. So that would be half the area of ABCD, which is S again. So we have three really interesting equalities um, involving the area of two triangles um, and you combine them and you get S. And so I claim that this means that G, H, and I have to actually lie on a line. 
In fact, I claim that every point on the line satisfies this same equality, um, but we just have to show GH and I lie on a line. And like I mentioned, this is a minus instead of a plus because I is on the opposite side of BC is G and H. All right. So I'm going to try to show I'm going to try to show this. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, so we know point H satisfies this equality. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the intersection of GI with BB um, and I'm going to call it H prime and I'm going to try to show H prime satisfies the same equality and then from there I'm going to try to show H prime is H. Okay. So I'm going to hide point H for a second, and I'm going to draw point H prime, uh, which I'm going to define to be the intersection of GI and BD. And I want to show that H prime satisfies the same equality. And yeah, of course, there's still another step. I'd have to show that if it satisfies this equality, then it has to be H. Okay. So how am I going to show that H prime satisfies this? And believe it or not, it's just going to be a bash using base times height divided by two a lot of times. So it sounds kind of messy, but I feel like it's more intuitive really than I'm making it sound. So I'm going to drop all the perpendiculars from GH prime and I uh, to the line AB and also drop the three to the line BC. All right. And I'm going to label the points as shown. And not only that, I'm going to label their lengths. Um, sorry for moving the diagram. I was just trying to make room there. Um, but yeah, so the lengths of all those heights are P, Q, R, S, and V, W. Okay. So we defined H prime to be on the same line as G, I. Um, so what is, so first I'm going to write out, um, so we know the, the two equations for G and I are true. So I'm going to write it in terms of um, these letters. Um, so area of GBC, that's uh, Q times BC over 2. Um, and area of GDA is um, P times AD over 2. Uh, so if you take this equality and multiply both sides by 2, you would get, oh, whoops, actually I did the one for I first. Okay, so the area of IDA um, is R times AD over 2, and, and the area of uh, IBC is S times BC over 2. So the difference between those two has to equal S, so if you multiply both sides by 2, you get R times AD minus S times BC is 2S. And we can do a similar thing with the equation for G, which we know to be true. And uh, we would get P times AD plus Q times BC is 2S. Okay. And now we want to show that this similar equality is true, but with point H prime. So... The question is, how could we find V and W in terms of P, Q, R, and S? Um, and that's actually what I'm going to do right now. So this is a little, may seem a little bit tricky, but um, I feel like it's actually a very intuitive idea. So it says if H prime is on the segment GI, then these segments V and W essentially have to be linear combinations of P, R, Q, and S. Right. So here's what I'm going to do. So let I H prime over I G equal K. So K is basically how far H prime is along the segment I G. So, um, okay. So if that's true, um, if K were one, let's say, then V would equal P. And if K were zero, then V would equal R. So V is some kind of weighted average of P and R. Um, and it turns out that it's, it's this equation, which is not very hard to show. So V is uh, K times P plus one minus K times R. 
Um, so if you check that out, um, if I if if uh, k were equal to one, then v and p would be equal. That's true. If k were equal to zero, then v would equal r. But it turns out v is somewhere in between, and the proportion in between is, is essentially k. And so it's not hard to show. I'm not going to prove it completely formally here, but it's not hard to show that this is true right here. Okay. And then we could do a similar thing with W. So W is equal to KQ uh, minus one minus KS. And that's because Q and S are kind of uh, on opposite sides of uh, the line BF. Um, and so that's why we need the minus. Um, and so what we can do is we can take the same equation up here, but for H prime, and now we can start to calculate it. So H prime uh, BC plus H prime BA is one half of uh, W times BC plus V times AB, okay? And now we can substitute these two equations for V and W. So I'm gonna do that. And if you work out the algebra, uh, this is really just um, k times uh, the bottom equation plus 1 minus k times the top equation. Um, so everything sort of cancels very nicely, but it's, it's not really surprising that it would cancel so nicely because um, basically the sum of the areas of those two triangles from H prime, it kind of makes sense that it would be a, a linear combination of the same expressions from uh, G and I. Um, okay, so yeah, so this is half of W times um, BC, and W is KQ minus one minus KS. So um, if you look at, uh, this should actually be BC, not BD here. Um, but basically, you're taking everything with k from both of these two terms and factoring it out, and then you're taking everything with 1 minus k and factoring it out. And then this is just half of k times 2s, because this is equal to 2s, plus 1 minus k times 2s. So everything cancels, and you just get half of 2s, which is just s. Okay. So we've shown that H prime satisfies the equation that H satisfied. Um, now the question is, is that good enough to show that H prime is actually H? Um, and I claim it is. Um, so we, we, we define H prime to lie on the segment BD. So we know that H prime satisfies um, this equality, and we know that H is also a point on segment BD that satisfies that equality. So do they have to be the same point on BD? Uh, the question is, could there be a different point on BD that also satisfies this equality? And I claim the answer is no, and I'm gonna show you why here. So uh, S, um, so, so we can sort of rethink about the sum of these two areas. So H prime BC, uh, it's, it's basically the area of BCD times BH over BD. So, so it's the area of BCD times BH prime over BD. And then the, um, the area of H prime DA is uh, the area of ABD times dh prime over bd. Um, so these two fractions add up to one um, because bh prime plus uh, dh prime is bd. So basically this is a weighted average of the areas of triangle bcd and triangle abd. And we know that if you do a weighted average by taking half of one and half of the other, uh, we know from up here that it makes it true, but no other weighted average could get you to S um, because if half of BCD and half of ABD gets you to S, um, if we took a smaller fraction of 
So in this case, BCD is the one with the smaller area. If we took a smaller fraction here and a larger fraction here so that they still sum to one, it would be too big. And if we did it the other way around, it would be too small. So it has to be half and half. So, so BH prime has to be half of BD. And so therefore, H prime has to equal H. They have to be the same point. And if H prime equals H, then that's what we want, because then we've shown that G, H, and I are collinear, which solves the problem. So this seems like a fairly simple problem when you first hear it, but it turns out to be surprisingly tricky. And all the other solutions I've seen, some of them took less algebra or were faster, but none of them are really that obvious, I feel like. So this one actually, believe it or not, felt the most intuitive to me. Uh, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone.